So speaking on behalf of Invictus is Dan Krisnick, who's founded Invictus in 2014, uh, the vision to create a Canadian licensed producer to meet the significant demand of legal marijuana. Uh, he's run this company and has been nothing short of an execution story. He has a proven track record of success incubating different businesses and growing them from inception to uh, cash out strategy. Prior to this, Krisnick was a senior manager at Deloitte and Touche, where he served in leadership roles in its insurance and, assurance and advisory group, advising public and privately held companies for a period of 10 years. He's received numerous awards, including the Governor's General Academic Medal and was recognized as one of businesses in Vancouver's top 40 under 40. Oh, you're under 30. Almost. Thank you very much. You. This is a great presentation. Thank you. I'm just going to click here. Great. Thanks, everyone, for joining today. Uh, everybody hear me okay? So just a little bit of a background. I know Michael mentioned um, a little bit of my education and work experience, but really wanted to let the audience know why I started Invictus. I started back in 2014 um, when everybody thought, you know, you're crazy. I said, look, I'm getting into the weed space. And guys are going like, what are you thinking? You, you're a corporate America kind of guy and you're a, a CPA by trade. What are you doing getting into the cannabis space? And I thought um, one thing that always kind of intrigued me was uh, something that I saw back in early 2014 was when uh, this program came out with Dr. Gupta, Charlotte's Web, and you saw this poor girl Charlotte with these epileptic seizures and what was happening to her in terms of um, a day-to-day -day, um, fiasco in terms of her health. And the family at the time found out that CBD, which was the non-psychoactive part of the plant, could actually help the seizures. And I, I thought, look, this is something that's you know, going to be revolutionary. It's changing. It's not a dot-com bubble. This is something that you can buy on the streets. And uh, from a medicinal point of view, I thought, okay, this is something I want to jump into. I have three kids of my own, and I would do anything for them if they, I found out they were sick and there was some type of medicine. So I jumped in full feet into Invictus, uh, started it off. And over the, the years, for those of you that are following the space, there was a couple of years that it was, times were tough. It was not easy to raise money. It was only until 2016 when the window of opportunity started to open up. Canada became uh, more, the sentiment of the people became more accepting towards it. And we were fortunate because we did start in 2014. We already had a platform. We were already public. And we went out and we raised about $80 million over the last 20, 24 months. And that really gave us the head start into where we are today. Um, in terms of our Canadian footprint right now, we've got, as you can see on the, uh, the, the map here, we've got our acreage farms, which is in Alberta. That's a licensed producer to cultivate. Um, one of the things that I'll talk about in a moment is really kind of why invest in Invictus, and acreage is, is one of the big things here. Uh, AB Laboratories is our other licensed producer with sales license out in Ontario. And then we have AB Ventures, which is a pre-license that we has about 100 acres out near the Hamilton area that we'll be expanding on. So in terms of uh, our production profile, we're looking at an exit of 20,000 kilos. And what I mean by exit is by the end of this year, we'll have a production rate of about 20,000 kilos. And then by the end of 2019, based on our aggressive expansion strategy, we're going to have about 50,000 kilos. So why invest in Invictus? You guys are all here to, you know, money show, obviously invested related, investment related. Um, and one thing that I want everybody to kind of do is do your homework, right? Go, go look at, you know, our website, Invictus-MD.com. Uh, educate yourself about the company to really understand uh, where we are in terms of uh, peer comparable valuation. And today, I wouldn't say we're necessarily apples to apples to all of our competition because they've been selling product for years and we we're just starting to get into sales. But with our assets and our footprint in Canada, uh, we'll quite quickly become one of these leaders. One of the, the metrics that I use is looking at enterprise value over kilograms. So average in the industry right now is about $49,000 um, in terms of value per kilogram. Uh, Invictus right now in an exit in 2018 has a 20,000 kilo exit. Um, based on that, our stock price at $1.81 is far undervalued compared to what our peers are valued at. And extrapolating that over to what would be the value of Invictus would be like an $8 to $10 stock. Obviously, there's um, other factors that play into that. But that's one of the things that you'll see over the coming months as we start to execute on some of our, 
our growth plans, that when we do become more of an apples to apples comparison to our peers, that you'll start to see that our stock will kind of follow suit. Another uh, comparable that I'd like to look at is really the, the sales and the, the profitability. And that's kind of the most important, right? So we've got about a fully diluted enterprise value of 169 million, one of the lower uh, tiered cannabis companies in terms of valuation today. But with the assets that we have and the kilograms that we can produce, you know, we should be in this Invictus at adjusted average of a far greater uh, market cap today when you compare it to our, our competitors. If you look at the adjusted industry average, you're looking at 15 times uh, sales in terms of enterprise value or 85 times EBITDA. These are crazy multiples, but this is reality. This is what the market's paying for. And we're trading at three times sales and 10 times EBITDA. And for the following year, we're only trading at 0.6 times sales and one times EBITDA. So again, more a lot of financial detail there. So I do encourage everybody to you know do their homework and kind of look into you know what why Invictus? Why would I invest in Invictus? And I think one of these, um, you know, key catalysts that are coming up is going to be our sales license into the, probably the coming months within our our big asset in Alberta. Other catalysts that we also see coming up are more the macro catalysts. We're going to find that Canada will legalize, so we'll have final reading in June next month, and then with the expectation that it's going to be fully uh, sold a, 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 amongst all the different provinces under the fully legal system come August of this year. Something that is obviously kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity, you know, to get into the space, to be early like us. I think first mover is key. First mover advantage is key here to be able to be production ready and actually get out there and hit the ground running when we're actually selling um, legally in Canada from a recreational standpoint is going to be key. A lot of, um, you know, you read a lot of press releases about guys are coming out with millions of square feet, but, you know, this is production ready mid 19 into 20, right? So the guys that are going to be uh, the first movers into the rec market are going to be the ones that succeed, especially with our, our branding uh, restrictions up in Canada. It's very vanilla. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the packaging, but it's um, very much a, a vanilla, big warning sign. So how do you differentiate yourself? I think you differentiate yourselves by being speed to market and having those kilograms ready for the market as we go recreational. Other catalysts include uh, bringing out our additional expansion into our various facilities, which we'll look at in a moment, as well as getting our overall oil license and our retail and uh, distribution strategy. Another thing as an investor that will be important for you to understand as you do your homework on, on Invictus is really how many shares are outstanding. Fully diluted, we have 115 million shares out. We have 20 million in cash in the bank right now. But if all those shares were um, either exercised in terms of options or warrants, we'd have another 37 million in cash. So these are warrants and options are actually quite high priced. Some of them are in the money, and all of them will expire by the end of this year. So there, there will be the start to see a shift into Invictus, and you'll start to see some funding coming in from the exercise of these warrants. Um, in the past uh, four months, we've had about $15 million already exercised. Recently, we brought on Gene Simmons as our chief evangelist officer. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I bring on Gene. You know, Gene is somebody that pro proclaims he's never smoked a cigarette, never done a drug, never um, drank alcohol. And that's the exact reason I brought him on board. Gene and I uh, became first fr friends, and then we started talking about business. And I thought of the name chief evangelist officer after I studied other companies like Google, who is really an evangelist is somebody who tells a story. And this is something that Gene, we thought, could do for us, and not from a necessarily product promotion side, because we have very strict rules in Canada that we cannot have celebrity endorsement. So we brought on Gene to help promote the public company, to help get the name Invictus out. So people like yourselves would actually look at it, research it, and try to learn more about it to eventually make your decision to buy the stock. He's going to be on the, I think, on the floor tomorrow speaking. So I uh, definitely encourage you guys to go see him. He's a great guy. In terms of our licenses, so I mentioned earlier, we've got our, our big catalyst coming up here is at Acreage Farms. We just built out our phase two facility. So in total, we've got about 5,000 square feet. Um, it's not, nothing new. We've a bunch of these presentations have square footage, and you know we're also production ready. Um, our main goal in Acreage Farms is to actually get 
sales license over the coming month here. We had sales inspection about seven weeks ago, and typically it takes about eight weeks to get the sales license, and that's going to be a, a big catalyst. We have over $2 million of product in the vault and ready to go, so as soon as we get the sales license, we can hit the ground running. So that, that property is on 150 acres. You, know, you can imagine um, lots of property, lots of expansion opportunity. If you look at phase three, four, and five, we've already cleared land for phase three. That's another 80,000 square feet. It's fully funded. We also funded about 36% of the phase four, and that's not including the warrants that I mentioned earlier that should be exercised within this next year. So ton tons of ability to, to grow and expand within our facilities. Uh, back in Ontario, we've got uh, two facilities. Uh, one just acquired, and it's adjacent to the other property. So in Canada, you get automatic licensing if you have a piece of property that's joined, so you can actually put under the same license. So in under phase two, we're, we've commenced construction for the 40,000 square foot location, and we expect that to be completed in June of this year. So again, production ready for the recreational market. Another facility that we're looking at building out this year is on a property that's 100 acres. It's about eight minutes from our other property in Hamilton, Ontario. So that obviously is vast amounts of land. We'll be looking at uh, building onto that square footage and continuously looking at different, what everything right now is indoor, but different types of growing, whether we do a little bit of greenhouse in there um, and some discussion has been had to even doing outdoor. So overall production strategy, you can see to the far right, uh, net to Invictus. Um, right now we've got 20,000 kilos funded. Uh, we're going to be working into 2018 and 2019 uh, with a good production profile, ready for the recreational market, and obviously the, the medicinal as it is today. And a big part of the next steps is, okay, well now you can grow this, who cares? you got to sell it, right? So. Um, Canada, for those of you who haven't followed all the regulations, it's, it's provincially driven. It's, uh, it's not, a, not an easy um, trade, but uh, there definitely a lot of work is going towards uh, securing the distri distribution channels into these provinces. And we're definitely working with um, the retail storefront as well. So in some provinces, you're permitted to have that fully vertically integrated with the exception of a liquor board in the middle but owning uh, retail locations. Um, so we're looking at a number of provinces in BC, Alberta, and Saskatchewan where we'll be able to have uh, a retail footprint. AB Laboratories, as it stands right now, has a agreement with Canopy. So we've been selling right now through the Canopy Grow uh, Canop uh, craft site. Um, down the road, that's uh, it's an open-ended agreement. If we continue to sell that down the road, will be our decision. But uh, definitely working with all these other provinces that I've listed here uh, in terms of expansion and distribution of the recreational cannabis. Here you can see all the potential retail locations. These are locations that we've started to secure leases and that we'll start to build out uh, dispensaries of our own. So again, in Canada, it's quite different. Um, than some of the, the U.S. be vertically integrated of having a, a grow and a dispensary. In, in Canada, you got to go up to the liquor board as an intermediary, um, and from there you can sell into the dispensaries, and in some places you can actually own those dispensaries. Once you get the sales license, you actually can apply for a cultivation, or a, sorry, oil and extraction license. That's something that we've been working on, and as soon as we get our sales license within our acres farms facility, we'll be applying for the oil strategy. Um, I think edibles is a big, you know, play down the road here. It hasn't really come into Canada yet. Um, we can sell oils, but they've been having discussions about edibles. Uh, they'll come uh, in the coming years here as we continue to roll out the recreational strategy. One small business that I didn't mention, this is one of the legacy assets that we owned called Future Harvest. It's a fertilizer company that manufactures fertilizer for our grow, and that's based out of British Columbia. It's a very small asset, but it, it is legacy, and we acquired it back in 2015. Uh, 
uh, over the team. Uh, you know, I've talked about myself, talked about Gene. Uh, we've got a you know typical team like a lot of the other cannabis companies, guys that are professional, you know, good growers. Um, uh, George Cabatton in the middle there, he's ex Big Tobacco, who was with Morrison JTI. Um, Sparks, uh, director on the Ontario Liquor Board, and uh, some of the other individuals have been with me in other ventures. Um, you know, one of the things they always hear about, you know, you're betting on the jockey, you not know, on the horse. This is something that uh, has been a passion project of mine. Um, I've been successful in other business ventures. I built Canada's largest for profit education company. Uh, that company was doing 150 million in revenue and 200 million in profit when I exited, 1,500 employees. Um, I also, on the side, uh, sometimes you have to do things on the side of the family, but when Invictus started, there wasn't very much capital and the times were tough. And I, I co founded a lithium company during that time. We just sold it a month ago for $260 million all cash deal. So, definitely, you know, no stranger to building business and uh, doing the same with Invictus. So, again, strongly urge everybody to, you know, look up the company Invictus d.com uh, learn a little bit more educate yourselves uh, by all means you know reach out to myself or anybody on the team if you have any uh, further questions and happy to to help in any way and hopefully we we see you on the bid one day